So I assume that this memory, the function of memory is to go back in time. So there's something in the material body, the part can't go fast. If the mass increases. So if, of course I assume that there's a mental part which goes fast and it connected it to uh, connected it to going faster in the speed of light as the memory aspect. And then it came to my mind intuition or any other kind of meditation special intuition should come to a place where the time stops. So I didn't come from a traditional way. I mean, now you see me, I'm a first monk, but uh, there I had an experience. I'm very, going very fast. I just want to give these points. Um, and then, on the back of it, look at the court kind of. No need all these distractions. <laughs> I want to give you something and go quickly. Some very short time here. And uh, I want to somehow give whatever I have. It's for me, very special, but what can I do? It's like nothing belongs to you. I can't control coming here on time. And I'm also very late. Like always, for all programs, I have to be meditating myself and then go. So I don't open my hand to hurry up. Anyway, so when if something goes, then I, I based on this, actually I also was reading all these books and the Bible and many other literature and I came across you a little bit short this thing because my approach is very, you know, that uh, because it's very unorthodox <laughs> and traditional <laughs> and so uh, then what happened I connected it to like, you know, like there were like stories like thousand years on earth is one day in certain parts of heaven, certain realms. So it just connected that these particular realms do exist through relativity. If time can be this thing. So I sort of focused through that and predicted actually like the English language, English literature papers, the headings of two essays. Same titles, and when I went to the exam hall, I'm going very fast. It's my father who went. I'm in the lot. I need three hours, as I told you. I built up something, <laughs> but I tried to cut short. It's okay. And then uh, uh, my father uh, got this to, through my tutor, written uh, two essays. When I went to the exam, these two essays, these headings were there. Okay. So that was the beginning of when I was 40, 15, 16. I felt like the universe was in my hand. I didn't care about exam, nothing. I was so happy with that. And But still, I didn't get the idea of being a monk. Based on this, I had another experience at the age of 18, when I was going for walks. Um, like, uh, suddenly, you know, like, uh, it was like, some, like a flash, like in my mind it came, what's the causes for any phenomena to take place, something like this. It was a mental picture. And there was like, suddenly, <laughs> very fast, like a flash, uh, it came to my mind like everything, I, I verbalize it like this, anything that begins in time definitely ends. And for this understanding, there's no beginning and therefore there's no end. This is it. <laughs> this is how I felt. And there was a picture in my mind of a monk and it came to me that I should be like them. These so-called monks, these people, they are trying to experience this and uh, that I should be such a person. And that time I was planning to go, to, I was to go to Princeton because that I was thinking I would study astrophysics <laughs> because Einstein was my hero that time. So I had no idea until then. But with this experience, I was seeing solidity like jelly. Okay, I, this is the closest I could come, but really it can't. It was like with that jelly vision, I also felt no interest. Like I was holding a string, and suddenly I see it's a snake, and just. Like you don't, there's no question of letting go. Mm. So that is the journey started from there. And then I told my father, I want to be a monk. Actually, I thought Princeton, the university, the longest thing that will survive will be those granite buildings. When I used to picture those buildings, it looks like just finished. So what's the point of going there? <laughs> Leave on my degree and all these things. Fast forward, this is how I saw my life going, okay? So then I came to Sri Lanka, met a German monk who was a forest monk. He inspired me further. 
was a wandering monk, and there he took me a commando journey. <laughs> Still, I had to, you know, get my father, all these things. It took 10 years, 28, I became a monk. I mean, mentally, I became a monk at the age of 18 with this experience. Also, some the personality changed in my life. Before, I was so, like, so getting to hot, get hot-tempered, <laughs> okay. and the sort of uh, very hot-tempered, like I used to get into fits. But after the, this experience to now, I would count the amount of time I got, I mean, I would have scolded somebody, you know, like a <coughs> silly person or something. I knew I was agitated or angry. And that was, uh, the all mostly seven times I counted, now I'm 46 from that time to now. It was mostly with the taxi drivers in India. <laughs> so, what can I do? You know, <laughs> I hope for the eighth time I would never, it will never happen until I leave this planet. So, but can't help it. You can't act like that. You, I know how it is done. It's by the, the anger comes, my friends, because you're stressed out. How do you get stressed out? Say you enjoy some feeling or pressure. You suck the energy, the mental energy. You may give, you suck the mental energy. Then that energy is sucked out when pressure is enjoyed to the five senses mostly, then you need energy to go inside. So you're mostly experiencing the stress part of your brain, not the deep part of uh, you know consciousness where it's energy, energy. You're not going inside. Inside your brain, there's like a cool pond, cool well. Normally we think like we settle this, that, and externally something and we'll get peace of mind. It doesn't happen that way. If you touch or tap this inner well of uh, cool water, you're already there, my friend. It's already there. The external world remains so. And because so this is something one has to really, because we always think we may have to settle this, that, and only we get peace because we are not masters of peace of mind. We are masters of just manipulating the material world. We, are not, you know, we, we hardly understand consciousness, what consciousness is. And then consciousness is because the experience of peace is in the mental state, it's not a physical thing. So when you get this mental pay, uh, I mean mental, when you get an understanding of consciousness, you will have this particular experience. So anyway, I'm going fast. This one. Uh, then I became monk when I was 28. So then these things change, okay? But sensual desire, I must tell you, I have to struggle. It takes a long time to remove from the head. And this has been a fight all the way. And uh, then, uh, when, when was it? Now, after that, I happened to go to, from jungle to jungle. And there only I tested some of them. And when I met my teacher, he introduced to the original sutras, of the Buddha's teaching. There I knew how to practically watch that. And through those ex reading and practicing in the forest with my teacher, I had some more other experiences, which tallied with that my previous experience. And it was driving me internally more and more to follow this path. And uh, then I also realized that Buddhism that we teach or study, practice today is a kind of diluted one, interpreted by our defilement. So if we need certain positive way of brainwashing. We have to go to that triggering of the ancient, simple, deep understanding. Experience is deep, but not the methodology. It's so simple. We need, because we need to have a level of purity, uh, that means level of tranquility, to get that uh, perception from there. So when we are in a hurry, we sort of squeeze the understanding, distort the effect of the sutras. Okay? So this is something my one of my so in the jungle I experienced when a lot of pain with going fast, very fast 2004. I have because my life, now many tell me one thing only people explain a sutra and explain. Many monks they do like that. My mission is not to explain sutras, to make you realize it, and to be with it, to get into it. So, tell you honestly, many years back I was invited to States. I told them when I'm an Arahant, I will come here. Yeah, I was not joking about it. You know what means Arahant, right? When you don't get angry, greedy, or you don't have ego. So, then I faced some situation. Then I was, on 2012, I came to the public. When I came from Himalayas, I was, being, I was going to Kailash from Sarawak from 2009. And 2012, I came to the public, like crowds were coming in Sri Lanka. It was, I'm going very fast, right? 
how it happened is also very interesting because there's a mystical side. I don't want to, I, now one of, most of you don't, I don't think here get this experience also with my, uh, the two sides of it. One, the practice and so 2013, 14, 15, I faced near that experience. Did you hear that? With the horn. <laughs> I think I'm just going to cut you immediately. Near death experience. You, you know about attitude sickness, right? And in lack of oxygen. Uh, I have faced other experiences in the past, but this uh, near death experience came. I have seen other people also dying and sort of recover after this in my previous trips. And when I got this, I also knew I got it while I was going to Kora. You call it the Kora, going around and the midway like all blue, and I didn't know whether I could just move on. And anyway, my guide and the driver, what can they do? We just pursued until we came to the lake, Mansarova. I don't know if they know these places. So there, when I was there in the night time, I was not sure. Then we have a meditation, how we prepare ourselves to face, you know, like this has been, we do daily. You see, habit works when you're dying. So if you're always, you now someone tells, I wish I meditate when I die. Yeah then you must daily meditate. Because if you're worried about what you think, mostly it comes to the moment of death. Suddenly you can't do crash program, you know, suddenly if you're dead, let me meditate. <laughs> Happy works. So, then what happened? Uh, that time I was preparing with this focus. Then where we have a practice where we see how the illusion of self takes place. Now this has to be done daily. So this is normally with the skandhas, have you heard of this? Rupa Vedana, what we are made up of, right? Like we have a body and we have consciousness and there are factors of consciousness. We feel something and we recognize it or you know, perceive it as perception. And when we perceive as pleasant, we react with greed. When unpleasant with, you know, um, what is this, aversion. And it's neutral, it's delusion. So this is normally happening all the time, you know, with our six sense organs, I hear most time for in mind. So this, there's a practice how to watch this, even this experience. I was trying to, you know, I was feeling attached a bit and I was feeling the tension in the car, you know, feeling, oh, sorry, I feel sorry, these people are going to, I'm going to miss them, <coughs> this time is so valuable. But then again, I came to my mind, why am I getting more with illusions? <laughs> in the car, then I feel the, you know, the, the chair, there's a focus that you are bringing your attention to the moment and so this is this five skandhas one has to sort of uh, if, now even some ha thing happened in the past you have to think you know your mind is just like a screen a neutral thing and you look back in the past any got scolded you or some hurt feeling or anything any memory you have to check that first you know like what it is it was something you saw you heard from your senses and when you saw or heard something in your senses, this is called eye consciousness, and immediately you have a feeling and you perceive it. So that those are the factors, otherwise you don't get, you know, you don't, and there you recognize that as a self, that I experienced it, and somebody did something to me. But when you see them as those components, if you really picture it and just really watch that, you will see something like an objective thing, and where you get that, that's the true picture of that. And, uh, and you'll be able to let go of that. That's where you analyze, you study. And any tragedy, any circumstances, any problem you have, this is so powerful because your ego is the one that really, you know, sort of brings, gives this feeling of suffering or sense of I in it, wrong sense of I. And when you, but to remove the wrong sense, you have to watch what you feel, how the I arises. It doesn't arise as associating emptiness. It arises associating something, that is some substance, especially the body and the mental substance. But then we look at it, what we identify as self, it changes from one to the other. So even now, if we worry about the past something or anticipate something in the future, what is it? You're seated here, you feel only the cushion and you feel all these things. The past is something. Something like in a dog looking to a well, you see. He sees his reflection and goes out and he thinks there's another well, I mean, then another dog inside. Actually, there's no such a thing. So, if you remind, that is so powerful. So, anyway, when I was about to face death, 
but I knew I couldn't make it, and we had this practice where I was trying to focus. Then the thought came, I couldn't share enough with the people. Because all this time I was running away to purify myself, to perfect myself further. And then I thought, can't help it now, I have to just now let it go. Then anyway, I survived that situation, okay? 2015, because my whole preaching is all the, so much experiences, I have to just only tell my experiences. Because there I hope that some teaching will go for to you. I don't want to tell something which I have never experienced, done. This is not my way. So it's full of stories of my... So there are like three stages of, major stages in this monk's life. One was in the forest with the bears, in the jungle, where I had to spend six months. That was the period I had. And another period was cutting across the terrorist organization in Sri Lanka. It was this like uh, the IS, IS, something like that, but it's called ATT. I don't know whether you know about it. So this from south to north of Sri Lanka. So this is something I don't want to be talking about sutras. How I, I didn't see them as terrorists. I saw them as uh, the, the makeup of a human being, their body, feeling, perception. So I'm telling you, this thing should not be just something you read here. You must be seeing the world through this. This is like a kind of manual to see, you know, phenomena, life, existence, this Buddha's teaching. You get a vision to watch the world in such a way that you create an entire dimension of truth <laughs> and freedom. You may be in Manhattan, but you're like a lotus, you know. That is something you can build up. I mean, it's a big job. And you can contribute to world peace and all that, stopping all the nuclear. You see, nuclear mind only creates a nuclear bomb. <laughs> if you have, if this doesn't, it, if this is all created by the thoughts, and you'll be contributing, you're so connected. And if you have this, if you purify and become more self conscious, your enlightened mind is more powerful than the unenlightened mind. You must not underst underestimate that. If you start to make an impact, it was not thousands of people who made revolutions, it was single people you know, who made a big, it, it will have an effect. My guru used to tell me, if you purify your mind, it can create, you know, whatever you manifest, you are determined, it will definitely have an impact. It means it will manifest what you wish. So this power doesn't come to a person who has anger or greed, who is reducing, when he's, when he's removing all the wishes, he gets the power to wish anything. So this is something like that. So anyway, 2014, I just came, but... Then, 2014, 2015, again I faced this problem. But this was like a no return journey. I was almost going into a coma. Okay. And there, in that situation, uh, again the same thought came. I couldn't give it up. Okay. And after that, anyway, I survived, you know. I had some cutting very fast and then uh, went to Lhasa and Kathmandu. And in Kathmandu, I was recovering physically, and another thing happened. It was like uh, first time I ever experienced like the devil. You know, we know the demon attack, who had yogis and all that. This is the first time I found say, the power of such a power, and it was like I was very confident. I was very strong for many years in the forest, practicing this that. But uh, I was like I was in a bunker, and suddenly like one hand went. I can't tell you what happened because it's not. Maybe one day I will tell. <coughs> It was like my robes were being re going to be removed completely, okay? Like this show, something that happened. And there I couldn't survive. How to survive, what I did was, I just have to, I told, I, I just, you know, I was just wondering how to know what I desire, what I like. It was all shattered to zero, to ground level. Then suddenly it came to my mind, don't personalize it. Now this is not, not a nice, uh, not a strong word to convey what I wanted to say. So I used a wrong English word. Don't egoize it. <laughs> that means don't solidify this. It's just a phenomenon. It's just a happening. When I thought like that, I was able to go forward. And I knew that just going, going forward, you know, then I knew these problems happen, these difficulties come. When there are gems in front of you, it's like in rugby or any other sport, like this, you know, uh, sports, you know, like when you come into the try line, I don't know, you have here different rugby, right? <laughs> And uh, when you go to the try line, all tackle you. Hmm? This, tack this same, and you're going to progress on the spiritual path. And if you get a lot of problems, you must be happy, you're progressing. If you're not getting problems, you're not even coming closer to the finishing. <laughs> so this is very important, my friends. 
This you will face if you are really making an effort. You will get enemies, you will get cuts and bruises. That means you are progressing, you are on the battlefield. So this is something, anyway, uh, then I recovered. It took a long time until 2015, entirely I had to recover. 2016, I was good. I still continue to go Kaida. In 2017 also, after this 17 only, he started from Australia, went to Australia. Uh, the first time I accepted all the invitations, and this was one of it. So in case now next time I go to Himalaya, something happened, I'm okay, I feel I've done something. All right? <laughs> you should not have this thought and yet. This, even if the Buddha comes and tells me, don't go, I'll be going now because I know this is right. Because uh, I feel like while you're studying for PhD, there's something to be shared with your masters. But I was thinking too much about perfection. Anyway, the right time has to come. So this is short. Now I must go quickly. In your life, normally, there is like suddenly you put yourself into mud and you put your life in mud. I've never gone so far. Oh, so 40 minutes. minutes. Sorry? About 40 minutes. Okay, it's okay. Just I want to cover the points, okay? We go for a meditation in the end. But my type of meditation... <laughs> okay. And, uh, because I want to see you like this all the time, in the street, in the, this thing. You should look mad in society. Then only you want to progress, you are on the right path. If you look, you know, if you don't look, you should be like a fanatic. Then only you're breaking away, cutting across, like a, but, uh, wait, I must tell you. Hmm? So there's normally four things, okay? Normally, it's very well known now, mindfulness is stretch busting, it has a stress busting effect. Very well studied now with MRI scan and all this, you see. Even a little bit of mindfulness of feeling the touch, you know, like uh, the leg of the ground and just paying attention to that moment. Now my friends, in the suttas, it explains four. Mindfulness is just one. Now I don't want to reveal the three, you know, because they, they will take it out of this knowledge and slowly put a nice name and it's like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but actually there are four, okay? Now your entire lifestyle means the stress. You're only seeing the effect now. So one is, I told you, one means sense and desires. Enjoyment takes this draw, draws of energy. And especially when there are addictions, when you've got addiction to certain things, then it draws off energy. But luckily we have the, now the medical science, how the brain works, especially the release of dopamine. Beautiful, you know, it gives you good insight why these things, the, 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 because today, normally those days it was known, alcohol and these kind of things create a, addiction. But today I will tell you, my friends, even the internet creates a lot of things that drains our energy, okay? So I just cut short, I hope I can cover it, you know. These are a lot of points I just need to cover to give you the entire uh, area of uh, how to do this. So normally this stuff, you uh, know, this, uh, in, in UK I had these people, when they were driving, they used to sort of want to talk to me, normally I had to go silent, so organizers, some of them, they, uh, Pante, can we ask something? Uh, I said, okay, I, I don't want to disagree, I don't want to feel hurt, hurt them. But then mostly they ask, you know, like how to meditate while you're working and doing things. So now I, now I thought of all the time explaining what to do. I'm going to demonstrate now. So I told them, my friend, just feel the steering wheel now. Let's practice now. <laughs> okay? Just feel the leather, this thing that you're holding. And then, the what is this uh, uh, seat? The what is this? The seat, the back of the seat. Now he was like, you know, like erect. I said, relax in the seat. In Sri Lanka, we have this recline, nice, comfortable chairs. Feel about it, and just relax and feel the seat properly. And just relax and hold this, this thing. Look at the road, of course, you're not me. <laughs> and and then he was quiet. He didn't see, stop talking. So I just kept quiet. I didn't want to instruct more because he was experiencing this. This was like, you know, when you pay that monotonous, it looks monotonous, just the single immediately object that you're feeling. When you pay attention to that immediate moment of what you're cognizing, there the mind gets strength to go, to, to settle down. And when you settle down, it goes inward. When you go inward, you're touching that energy part of your brain. It's not even dipping into that, remember that. Um, because we have relative ideas of peace, my friends. There is so much, you can soak yourself into deep, saturate yourself into so much levels of peace. So this one, when you touch that coolness, there you feel relaxed and you don't feel time. 
That is an equanimous feeling, the equanimity. That is where when you are experiencing that equanimity, a little bit more, and there you don't feel time. Time passes, and you do your work more effectively. So anyway, when he came to the end of the journey, he asked uh, Bhante, uh, Bhante, you know, I never experienced this kind of peace before. And I wish you all this with me next week, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and so this is something you have to, you know, your day. And when you're walking, I know one from Milan, she told me like, you know, like when you catch a train or something, you note what this particular, you know, the train that you're getting to. And then you watch your steps. One by one, you feel the, just touching the, the floor. I mean, you can't go barefoot, my little like me. But uh, anyway, you can, you know, sort of check your tension and stress and then feel whether you're relaxingly going. Command yourself. And then you say, no, I'm going to, you know, do this walking without feeling stressed out. And then to feel relaxed, how I'm walking, to enjoy the walking part. So this you have to, now the thing is, many would think that we have a lot of work and that we can't get this practice. No, my friends. Because you have not opened that part of your brain. Hmm? You are not open. Now this is one, okay? This mindfulness. I am rushing through these things. I don't, I, I, I don't feel like revealing all these things because the other one, is, this is called Iriyapate in the sutras. This is how to develop samadhi part of the mind. So, other one is called Bhojana Matanyam, Indriya Sangara. And Indriya Sangara means, I must tell this also, this also good. This is called uh, like sense restraint. Hmm? I can look at you like, this is how you reduce the monkey mind. Now you sit here, you should feel, if you really get into that peace of mind, you don't feel like getting up. You want to continue, because you enter that so much peaceful dimension of this thing. For that, you have to build up a certain practice. So this is one called Indriya Samara, one practice. This is also drains our energy, and we learn to c control it. Now when you are going the street, especially, roundabout, you make sure that uh, you can you see you can look at things like this I see you right now look at my eyeball now do how do I look do I do I look focused now do I look focused no. now now then look at my eyes now do I look focused yes now do I look focused This is like you scream, like you, when you cross the road, you look at the vehicles going up and down, but you don't look who is inside the vehicle. Alright? So when you're passing somebody, you see somebody going, but you don't see the details of the person. Because the details might create irritation or attachment. Okay? These are basic practices. So this will increase your, you could say, um, uh, uh, tranquility. Alright? So this now, the other problem is, with this, you know, we have now, I tell you this, explain this quickly. Suddenly in our life, we have like suddenly we get, you know, distracted. Like we put ourselves into mud. And suddenly now we come for meditation programs and things like that. We, we have this in this modern day, suddenly we go out of track, where we do things hidden. Where we don't want anyone to see us, see what we are doing. Okay, it could be going to a bar, it could be some nightclub, or it could be, uh, what is this, in the internet, something, okay. When you are doing like this, you should know that what, what is that, why you want to do it hidden. Because it's some negative emotion, which is of course pleasurable or something enjoyable, and you are addicted to that. So, with this addiction is there, you must know it's draining your energy, and when you, that is a lower level of consciousness that you are activating, a lower emotion, which drains your energy. So, when you know this, that type of feeling that you experience, in the gross feeling, or gross consciousness, corresponding to that, there are dimensions that you open up. And there are beings in those dimensions that enter your system. Okay? And they give you the force to do this distracting thing. Okay? There are two things that give the force. That kind of invisible forces that you have enter, uh, entered into the system. The other one is sort of a wrong view. That means you are sort of think, okay, maybe taking this drug or something is good for cholesterol, you know, reduce my cholesterol or something. Something you justify, maybe it's for relaxation, just to keep small outing, you know, like that. You, unless you can't enjoy something poisonous. But when you get to know it's poisonous or damaging, then my friends, so it has to be convinced, you know, people like us come and upset your party. 
Okay. <laughs> so this is the end. The, the you must recognize now when I when I told this in Melbourne. So some of the boys listening from far away. He want to be a monk also. He has great ambition, but he doesn't know the current day problems which are sucking the energy of the people who are destined. They are great people also who are di directed because they have great energy and they are driven. They look outside sometimes. Oh my God, they look like thugs or something, but they can be great saints. There are a lot of energy in them. I can't tell my previous experience. There's no time for that, you know. There's a time Bruce Lee was my hero. That was very long ago before in Sri Lanka. So very rough, who have a lot of energy, so much the desires, they can be the great saints, okay? Because they have energy, my friend. That energy is transmitted to the other way, you can be super people. So anyway, when you get to know like this, this draining energy, suddenly you know that this was one uh, Melbourne, he suddenly, uh, he was in, going in the city and suddenly he felt distracted by something. Then he remembered, oh, Bhante told like this, there are ghosts who are driving us to this. And suddenly he was able to remove that, not to go to that, to that some kind of negative thing. So someone also with the cell phone, you know, in UK, I mean, I don't meet many people because after blessings I go out quickly. I hardly meet someone in another program. So he was telling after the program, like the cell phone, he was addicted to some pornography and some kind of this thing and it was not happening after that. So this is my job, which is, you know, damage the scars in your brain, which is going to block you to liberation. This I hope this meeting, you know, will clear it. And uh, so these are some knowledge points. So when you know, when you are suddenly going into washing, I mean, uh, mud, putting yourself into mud, next day you know that uh, this temptation comes with a friend or somebody, you know that to be careful. That means, okay, I mean, this is going to drag me and destroy me and remove my great potential. And you keep away one day, two days, three days. Then that you get time for that brain, the part of your brain to get prepared. And then, if, uh, if you do it very much, you'll find that you are not losing a lot of energy, which sucks your energy and makes you stressful. You know, this is the main thing, because you have a high dosage of damaging part of your brain. And then, when you remove that, you conserve energy. And when energy is conserved, you find you will be more enhanced in some, you know, the positive things. Because two sides, you can see the reptilian brain and the brain that, you know, like the analyzing thinking part we have, as we call the new brain. So with the frontal cortex here. Now, very interesting, this part of the brain, you know, like any of these emotions, and you can see, when it has come to a peak experience of this emotion, the reptilian brain completely takes over the full brain. And this is where the rules are given by for monastics, very interesting. Where it's uh, told as grave offense. It was so fascinating for me how the Buddha, you know, the how we laid down the categories of rules. That also showed his enlightenment to me. You know, that uh, that he called this, you know, especially, I'm going very fast, you know, like uh, uh, strong emotions, with especially two things, food and sexual activity. They are directly connected to the reptilian brain. And it also comes masturbation and all these things, you know, all fantasizing things that drains this energy. And uh, and you must see the MRI scan. So we might do normal activity, but we may not be able to develop meditation in a strong way. So there's a group in the modern this areas, like no fat. I don't know, have you heard? Like keeping away from these things. One week, like you have to count because it's a challenge. It takes, now he has told me, tone down Bhante, don't tell to the American people. <laughs> no, they are destined, they are going to be super saints, my friend. They are going to be great souls here. Yeah. I'm not going to tone down. I told I am a, I am a commando, I have come and I have to give one message. <laughs> and I believe there are people who are, uh, you know, who are destined for that. Because I also saw in the beginning, like this was like too much for me. And with it, I'm going to all these stories, which takes three hours for me to explain. But then I found that I was able to do the same thing because you are meeting this your potential. You know, this is not the consciousness you are experiencing. It is, it is the potential in you. You have created this. Okay. So if I say it's not possible, it will become impossible for you. If it's possible for one person, it will be possible for all the people who hear it and get to know about it. You will see this. And you will see. so anyway, these are also there's a group in YouTube you can check. No fact. Okay, these are all addictive addiction forming. Now, when you're going through that experience, you can see the dopamine equal to. So there are other experiences I had with you know like uh, some spirits have entered through games. Now, one who had a development in Himalayas, the rishis, they were able to bring the unseen spirits who are following you into the body. 
And then the one of the children, you know, like he was addicted to, he, and then the spirit was questioned, what, uh, like, you know, like, uh, how did you come to this body when he was 40, I mean, when he was 13 years old, how did he come? Through games. And, uh, you know, what, and then, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, through games. I was confused actually, I didn't know what this computer games, right? So, but then later I got to know that computer game addiction is, you know, the dopamine level that is put out, you know, that this thing is equal to heroin addicts. Did you know this in Oxford University? And then this another place, the spirit says it enters this body through the Facebook. Now I only know the word Facebook. I mean, you all might know better. You know, like, uh, I don't know, what, but I can understand like this, if the computer is there, okay, it is information technology, it is in the sensual world, the information technology, for the five senses. So the sensual world, the, uh, so anything that activates that negative emotions are strongly from the computer is neutral. But if it activates, definitely there could be the possibility of opening up lower consciousness and those things could come into us. Okay? So when you, when you are doing that, so when you keep away from these things, the energy part of your brain is reserved and slowly start to grow. It has been damaged. When it grows sometimes, it creates something opposite to the negative hormones. Normally we have adrenaline and other things. The opposite to that, there's no medical term, you know, actually only the Ayurvedic term is called uh, in um, what it is uh, ojas and tejas that is opposite this ojas tejas normally goes to the brain to the nerves and opens up areas of the brain which was not opened before and they get deposited and when you have this cycle created you know the other poisonous cycle gets slowly replaced and this thing and when that happens like that it gets deposited if someone your aura begins to become more clear and you become more handsome in other words. There will be a shine in your cheeks and forehead. I normally say when you get that, don't let go, don't lose that shine. So you don't have to apply what you call this uh, Nivea, you know, Nivea you have? Mm -hmm. And these things you don't have, you have a beautiful natural charm and personality. You do the other way, it's like you're going to be like a clown, you know? It's just personality is going to get so weak. You know, you like, you know, you. I don't know, you can have a bath and come and wash in the toilet, you know, but you don't, you, you can't clean, you can only clean through meditation. That is the bath you have to take <laughs> to repair and to sort of go. So these are the positive signs. Dr. Pabai, yeah. 20 minutes, sorry. 20 minutes. <coughs> oh my God, I'm rushing, okay. Um, Normally my meditation comes at the end of the program, but while talking also you get a meditation, you know, the energy. <laughs> so, uh, in Sri Lanka it happened, 8 o'clock they start, at 4 o'clock they sit down, they wonder what happened. Something, I'm not going to give steps, I come with the meditation and it should pervade your brain too. And just keep this experience immediately. So now what we do, so that part I told without falling, relaxing, how to come out of addictions, Facebook, and all these things, you know, you may be a, you see, so you have to use computers carefully and find out with it. And some place, some spirits told that this certain, uh, what is this website, I mean, website or page, you know, page. When you enter the page, that page, or that they are in the control of this, they are, they are under them. So you have to find out, okay? So you don't peek in also. So you And also the other thumb things, they thrive on fantasy, remember this. So you have to go back to those particular <coughs> things that you run away, okay, when you are in a cool state. Some things, some pictures, some interesting thing makes you like, wow, that feeling. Okay, that's where the dopamine rush comes. It could come in anything, like games I got to know, that like you, some uh, reward is given, is it? I don't know. Some reward, you know, that's where the rush comes. I don't know. I don't want to try it out also. <laughs> so, so this is where you must check, you know. Then when you close like that, you are going to be a pump, you are going to develop this meditation. This has to be done. Other way, and then you must start immediately tonight itself. While you know going to your work, that time you do uh, driving the vehicle and so on. And uh, let's see. We go for a question quickly before I okay? Before I go further. And then quickly. Any questions? <laughs> I did too much for you to digest, right? And this unusual monk who just comes in <laughs> from <laughs> Anything else?
you just want to quickly ask, or anything you'd like to, maybe I could answer you. You can ask me anything. All questions are spiritual for me. Uh, yes? Sure. All right. So, you know, what would you say is the difference between mindfulness and mindlessness? What is the difference between? Yeah. And then, you know, should this stuff make you think worse? Like, uh, let's say mindlessness is not really losing your thinking ability, you know, and then mindfulness is. Okay, I understand. Now, if you, there are two, so many types of mindfulness. Okay? It's not one. Mindfulness is there in every moment of consciousness. You can't get a proper conscious, and it's, it's, it's there always in any coherent activity. Right? Even car racing has mindfulness. So it is something where, um, uh, even in thinking, normally performing something, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's engineering or something, you get some ideas, so on. There are types of it. So the one we are interested in is which brings uh, self-realization. So that is a very rare, you know, it is a, not exercised properly. So we have mindfulness of focusing to the moment, the object, okay, there. But there is another added word in the old scriptures, it's called mind, comprehensive mindfulness. Pati Sampajane, where you analyze, you be a focus on an object and you kind of analyze. To get to that properly, you have to get to a cool area of the mind that you learn not to think. A mind that does not think and it thinks. That is intuition. <coughs> so that is where now we are trying not to think now because thoughts are coming too much through the five senses. We learn, that's where we call, we have, want to be tranquil and get peace of mind. When you are in a certain level of peace of mind, from that silent point, there is that, you know, that spark understanding. This is my job, I mean, this is where we are trying to go. And uh, so, I mean, if you are really interested, that is another special type, where you don't think and just it pops up, you know, like, uh, you learn that empty brain to uh, work, you know, like, so it's like going for a walk maybe, you're not trying to think or understand something, but what you have read, that's why they are like pointers now, the Buddha's teaching, they are the pointers for that triggering to happen. I mean, are you all studying the Buddha's teaching? I don't know what you're studying. Do you study that or do you study any other religions or what is it? I don't want to force you also in uh, my personal experiences through the... Like, you know, he removes... The, his, his teachings sometimes show you the certain sort of meditation where he removes the conceptualizing. Okay? That is where you see there's no ego. Like, for example, he takes in terms of hard nature-wise, you know, like hard nature here and the hardness here. Okay? That's hardness then you don't get a sense of this is me. Okay? Teeth here. And the hardness here. But there you have to see from inside. Like, you know, you have to... And then that idea of like, you know, you know, it's like coming together in this space, this idea of a person comes. Do you have a scissor here, quickly? Scissor, do you have a... Have a no? No, sir. Anyone have a scissor or something that I could use for cutting something, quickly? I want to demonstrate something. <coughs> Nothing, yeah? Your cell phones can't do that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Order one, something. <laughs> okay, don't worry. How do you demonstrate this? Uh, okay. So, we, okay. so they are all nail cutting? No, I don't want you to imagine. I want to really experience it. This is my job. Uh, imagination is okay, but imagine I can talk and tell you like this. No, I said hard here, hard here. But I have a razor. Oh, good, good. Thanks. You thanks. want a razor? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't worry, I'm not ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your knife. Which razor means? A razor is a very okay. sharp knife. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And uh, I need some donation. You want money? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, donation. Donation of money? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll give you money. No, not money. Hair. Hair donation. Hair, oh, hair donation. Oh, I don't have any money. I, I lose a lot of hair all the time. This one? But uh, the problem is, you know, ladies, I can't. <laughs> tell. Oh, I can't. Not that touch. I'm. Uh, is anyone else? What? Not you, Anchor. Please. Anyone, wait. Just relax a bit. So. Anyone else? Okay, you can. You can come, you can come, you can come. I have to 
brush all these things, you know. I, I want to give you whatever I can give. I know. There is another program on December 2nd on Saturday in New Jersey, if you guys are interested. We will have a full blown. No, uh, just dance me just as you feel, okay? Mm. Um, how much you feel this is you? Mm. It's your hair, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a wink or anything. Mm. No. times when there was a haircut when they were shaving they saw this truth so today this cut this should be your discrimination separating it and because justice in the, just this is in this space the sense of I come is mine comes this is the main practice to see through illusion to see through the conceptualizing like you is inside your when it goes to the, you know, the, what is this, uh, the toilet, then it becomes one with, uh, you can, it, it becomes one. But it's because all the time it was not yours. So this is the one meditation when you read the sutras. I hope if you happen to read the original, don't be like a scholar, you take it, they're like pointers in the caves in silent places. The monks, they settle down and just perceive this reality. Slowly, that simple analyzing and really watching reality, you know, of phenomenology, <laughs> phenomena. They were scientists actually, they saw the underlying truth of the illusionary nature and the sense of I coming to something which is to an illusion. And the I sense of I doesn't come without, if you have an empty space, you don't get that. It's like food when it touches your tongue, when the, it says ice cream, this thing, chocolate or whatever, it is consciousness and recognizing it. it is, and when that part is no more touching, that consciousness is not arising. Okay? So there and then when it touches only the world arises. Without consciousness you have no world. So when you get to, but you have to observe these things and get used to your brain. Your brain is used to living in illusion. So you have to uh, you get used to them, you will not worry about whether it is uh, office pressure. You can immediately, you know, sort of, uh, and it creates miracles, my friends. It will burn off your negative karma so fast. There are murderers, serial killers who got this experience and then suddenly their whole destiny was changed. And I, I have no time to explain my own experiences. When you don't fear, even when you are taken into guilt, actually with LTT, the guns, they were waiting. I had no weapon except these things. I entered the arm, tried to stop me in Sri Lanka. But uh, remaining in the present moment and seeing the illusion in nature. And uh, I was confident with that the terrorists when I was entering, those days as a young mom. And then with the elephants or bears in the lifting. There are, and here, I don't know, I, I was happy someone told me while you were coming, this is a dangerous area. I said, good, my God, <laughs> I'm getting some fun here. <laughs> is it so? I don't know. I had, uh, the, uh, who was taking the uh, gentleman, he was telling, before it was a little dangerous or something, I was over here, they were talking, right? Mm. You were talking. I was telling my God, you are coming to my place now. <laughs> I mean, because this is really important, you know. You have, when you face tragedy, when you find happy, you can find happiness. There's a way technique. This is a great happiness, my friends. That is real happiness. When there is so-called suffering, so-called this thing that you can free yourself. There's a method, a meditation which you can do. That is a, that's something to be able to pursue. Any question? Quickly, we do a meditation, okay? Can you describe all this? <coughs> The only signs of having more just more is a commanding power. You know, like there are people who make a mark in, in the world, society. They have created, they have consciously or unconsciously put that the send that ojas into the brain. So ojas is something you can't uh, really quantify it, you know. From a, I don't think still we don't have an instrument that has been made to like consciousness, for example. Because it is a kind of a supporting base for consciousness in a finest form. Mm? <coughs> so it uh, but it has that uh, life giving like very fine sort of, uh, so it's normally opposite of life draining, 
uh, aspect. Like for example, we have uh, you know the so normally the ojas is tapped with five things, especially the special brain we have. The more we do that, ojas is created. I think endorphin is something close to that. Endorphins, no? In runners, you have maybe. I hope I uh, maybe they find some more. These are positive substances. So it is runner is the VV, you know the the sort of effort. So there are five faculties in the brain which helps enlightenment. If you are activating any of the five, they will uh, what is this, uh, bring create this ojas. That is mindfulness, effort, wisdom, and uh, faith, devotion, and um, then this um, this samadhi, asamadhi, five. Okay, they are interrelated also. Now the opposite one is the reptilian brain work. That is anger, aversion, sensual desire. So you don't clear, see clearly, you know, like and the drowsiness, sleepiness, and fear, worry. These states are all in the reptilian brain, you know, which create adrenaline and all these things. So there, that's what, you know, if you have a pot, if you the water is full of dye, you know, you can't see your reflection. Same way if you have sensual desire. You know, so if you have a, like a boiling water, you can't see your reflection. So it's shown like a clear water, you know, it makes you see this, that automatically, that's what meditation is doing tranquilize, to release, so the mind is capable of seeing without effort. If you struggle to see, the illusion also is not good. You have to create the foundation constantly. So if you are living a restful life, while you are doing work, you are having less rest and removing addictions, you are, you are knocking at the door of preparation. There is suddenly in a park when you are walking, you might suddenly flash see this. Okay? Any other question quickly? Two things, yes. Ah, he is weak. I saw him first, okay? You were speaking about um, visions yeah. and how they were causing people to um, identify different spirits. They made the effort to put them in the body. Uh, <coughs> they managed to make them to put them in the body and make them talk. I mean, I captured quickly that uh, how it happened. Okay. Uh, perhaps um, this has been a question. So, um, I'm just curious about um, there's different dimensions you're speaking about. So if people are doing that with technology, um, how can one use the same technique but to go into dimensions that are, um, as you say, cool waters? To go into cool? Just how there are dimensions that aren't people should be fond of. How can we um, activate dimensions that are healthy? Okay, okay that's meditation. There you are. You're calming down, then you calm consciousness. It is in metta, especially karma, like this kind of, then you're brahma, very high consciousness. You're going to the infinite, infinite uh, function of consciousness. The infinite, you know, like it becomes so vast. You can only know from like aura and the personality. I will do something in the end of the program, okay? I'm going to do something, I hope it will not freak you out. But <laughs> Any, uh, now we are coming closer, no? Yeah. How many minutes, sir? You have seven. Seven minutes? <laughs> exactly. Please, quickly. Um, my question is about meditation to um, try to get samadhi versus an meditation for analyzation. And I'm wondering if you achieve true samadhi, is that the analyzation, it just happens? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yes. It will be the best, like you sharpen your life. <coughs> Cutting things very easy. Okay. More the samadhi, the stronger the insight. Lesser the samadhi, you have lesser wisdom. So normally samadhi comes with pure, more purity of your virtue. It's foundation, you know, like sense karma and all these things. When it's more strong, purified in the finest way, then the samadhi is stronger. It's more, this, more, if you have a broken virtue, broken samadhi, broken wisdom. If you have perfect virtue, per perfect uh, samadhi and perfect. Uh, so normally for samadhi, very much the sense control is a very big thing. Even the slightest thing you, you become, you learn to avoid if you want to develop more very fine eh? because okay. Any other? This gentleman? Fast I'll do it. I was I'm curious about the spirits. How do they enter your body? And how I know in this part of the world. <laughs> okay. Do you sleep? I do. And do you have dreams? I do. Sometimes do you have like a night flash? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm giving some thought for you to analyze. So I, I don't want to get focused on trying to find spirits, negative ones. If you, I'm only telling you when you get uh, temptation situations just to help you to sort of notice there must be some driving force within me and will notice this so that uh, so that uh, that will make you to stop to do that now not to imagine all the time maybe ghosts are all over 
So what you think it might also manifest unnecessarily. So, but uh, when you become more sensitive, you will know there are other dimensions too, other types of experiences. Uh, but if you have time to make research, you might uh, you might find many other things you know that do happen. Okay, but in Edgar Casey, many mentions. I would also you know just suggest. And I don't I don't think you got a full answer, but there's no time. Okay. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, no need, I don't want to think too much for you to think of ghosts and all that, you know, that who enter the body. Just when you should get the ghost, puts like a, a freaking out feeling when you suddenly get, you want to go to the nightclub or something. This is why I'm telling you. <laughs> Not for any other. <coughs> and it's true. An ice cream ghost. Is it? An ice cream ghost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Someone told about, you know, in, in when I was dropping, my, when I was being drop, uh, going to be dropped to the airport in India, this gentleman, I just want to tell him, I told don't drink in India, they call booth prep for ghosts. I said, there are booth prep, uh, don't drink alcohol. He said, I don't drink alcohol, Swamiji, but once a month I drink uh, a beer. Then I told, well, you must be having a baby booth prep, <laughs> a baby ghost. <laughs> so just, uh, okay, good way you think ice cream too. <laughs> okay, ice cream ghost. Okay, and I just will do a meditation quickly. All right. Before that, Bhante, we have one question from um, the insight from live Facebook. If you could, you have some. What is this? This is a ghost, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like one quick one, but it's from like out there in space. Somewhere. Yeah. It's, they say, uh, it's Charles, he says, Bhante, I think you had said that breath was not your regular meditation object. What were the most fruitful meditation objects for when you started? Fruitful means theory of relativity. <laughs> okay, but theory of relativity, I was a free thinker. I didn't, never thought I'd end up like this, is wrong. I never imagined, I thought I'd be a scientist. But uh, it just naturally took a course of time, when it was analyzing and sort of uh, this thing. But then uh, I had several other meditations coming into my life after this. But uh, this similar one is there in the skanda, analyzing of the Buddha, how he shows the personality, to see the illusion of personality, and no person in it. And this meditation, I think it was also helping me to face death, in the moment of death, to sort of accept it. And any crisis situation, this has been a great weapon for me to work. So, so okay. okay, let's wrap it up.